Now let us derive an expression for the electric field due to an infinite long straight wire. Let us consider an infinite long straight wire like this carrying a positive charge. Carrying positive charge. That this wire is of infinite length carrying positive charge. So first we need to find the electric field around this thin wire. Suppose if I take a point P in here and if I drop a perpendicular from here and take two charges which are let's call this point some D. Let this be a charge and another charge this one. Both of these charges are equidistant from the point D. Let us take and the electric field at the point P due to this charge, the charge at the bottom will be in this direction. You know the electric field will be in, along the charge and the point. Similarly, the electric field due to this charge on the, the one at the top will be like this. Since these two charges are at equidistance from P, they are symmetric which means these two lengths that is this length and this length remains the same. So the electric field is basically having the same magnitude. But what happens here is if you resolve this green electric field that is one at due to the bottom, you will get one, you can resolve that one along the horizontal and one along the vertical. Similarly, for the electric field at the bottom, you can resolve that one along the horizontal and one along the vertical. Since these two have same magnitude, the components have also the same magnitude. Also, they are aligned equally with the horizontal. So, these two will get cancelled and these two will add up. Which means, electric field is always for an infinite long wire, electric field will be always in a direction horizontal. That is, electric field is always in a horizontal direction. And this condition is same if you take any point, any point, if you take a positive charge in here, there is a another corresponding positive charge at the bottom. From that is either side of the point P. So the vertical components will cancel and horizontal components add. So at every word, the electric field will be in the horizontal direction or along the length, along a direction perpendicular to the length of the wire. So always keep that in mind. I'm drawing this again. So we have a we have a straight wire carrying positive charge. Like this, let lambda be the linear charge density. That means the charge per unit length. Linear charge density. Now you have to consider a Gaussian surface for a wire. The convenient Gaussian surface will be a cylinder. Let R be the radius of the cylinder and L be the length of the cylinder. Such that the wire passes through the axis of the cylinder. Let L be the length and R be the radius of the cylinder or cylindrical Gaussian surface. Okay. So this is the length and this one is the radius. And if you 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 can see that there will be three areas. One at the top 
second one the curved surface area and third one the bottom and if you take small areas on on all these surfaces let's call this one as ds1 and its direction will be perpendicular to the surface and let's take a surface in here let's call that as ds2 and its direction will be in this perpendicular to the surface and also take another area at the bottom face let's call that as ds3 and its direction will also be perpendicular you remember the direction of area will always be perpendicular to the surface but we have electric field in the horizontal direction only so so the total flux let's say d5 total will be the flux due to the first surface plus the flux due to the second surface plus the flux due to electric flux due to the third surface that is the total flux through the wire uh, total flux through the Gaussian surface so this is equal to we have E dot ds1 plus you know electric field times area will be dot product of electric field and area vector is the flux electric flux so d5 2 will be e dot ds2 plus this one e dot ds3 but clearly the electric field and ds1 are perpendicular to each other for the first surface and the third surface so you can write this as d5 total is equal to e ds1 cos 90 for the first plus e ds2 cos for the second surface they are parallel electric field and area vector are parallel so cos 0 plus for the third again it is perpendicular e ds3 cos 90 so d5 total the total flux will only be due to the second surface that is e ds2 cos 90 is cos 0 is 1 this this will this 2 will become 0 because cos 90 equal to 0 so and cos 0 equal to 1 now if you integrate in order to get the total flux let's say phi total you have to integrate this one e dot ds2 since the radius remains the same the electric field at the boundary or at the curved surface remains the same so it is constant so e integral ds2 if you integrate ds2 you will get the curved surface area of the cylinder the length of the cylinder is lambda and its radius is r so the curved surface will be base perimeter that is 2 pi r into height 2 pi r so this is the phi total total flux let's call that as equation number one and according to gauss's law we have let's write it in here from Gauss law, from Gauss's theorem, we have total flux through any surface will be 1 by epsilon 0 times the charge. But you, we already took lambda equal to charge density which is equal to Q by L. Therefore, Q will be lambda L. Clear. So, 1 by epsilon 0 lambda L. That is equal to phi total. Let's call that as equation number 2. Comparing 1 and 2, you, you 2 equal to 1. Implies E into 2 pi RL 
is equal to 1 by epsilon 0 lambda L. You can cancel this lambda L so that E is equal to lambda divided by 2 pi epsilon 0 R. This is the expression for electric field due to an infinite long straight wire carrying positive charge with the charge density lambda. Clear.